Hello, it is Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle today, which means a midweek, mid-difficulty crossword, and um, it will have some sort of theme. So let's get into that. Let's get into this midweek, mid-difficulty crossword, which has been brought to us by Noah Besenson, Matt R., Jake Rodkin, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They directly sustain this channel, keep this whole thing going, um, this series, through their direct uh, contributions. And I really do appreciate that, as I appreciate the efforts of everybody who has become a patron of the Daily Solve. Thank you so much if you are, are among that group. And you can join that group by going to patreon.com slash daily solve or clicking the link in the description field. And as a benefactor, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And of course, as any uh, patron, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And that continues to include new um, boss word solves as they go up. One went up yesterday, another will go up tomorrow. And um, all sorts of things have gone up actually just in the last week. So do enjoy those if you're a patron. And you can also subscribe to the Daily Solve YouTube channel. Please do that if you've not gotten around to it. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a link in the description field underneath the video. Nice, friendly um, chat community where people talk about the New York Times crossword and other crosswords and Wordle and so on. All right, uh, let's get on to today's puzzle. This is a Wednesday crossword constructed by Brandon Copy who has constructed about a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what's in store today. And we have, interestingly, three highlighted gray regions, but not a fourth. I would have expected a fourth in this area down here so that we would have been fully radially symmetrical with the puzzle. Ah, but here we have... Oh, right. Actually, it turns out I've just happened to click on the revealer, which says revealing an inappropriate amount of personal detail as depicted three times in this puzzle. Oversharing, maybe? Let's just, why not start here? <laughs> I think it's been ages and ages, probably months since I've not started at one across, but let's, let's start here instead. Debate venues. I don't know. At all, ever, if that happens at all, it happens ever. Kind of brick, a Lego brick, maybe, the toy. Little off the top, say, it could be a, a haircut, it could be a trim, just to take a little off the top. Authoritarian government could be described as a regime, although I don't know that it, does a regime need to be authoritarian? I don't particularly think so. Uh, whiffs could be aromas. And, oh, for, debate venues are fora, so plural of forum um, in this, you know, the sort of classical sense. All right. If one was in one's comfort zone, one felt at home. And fielders shout. So I suppose on the baseball field, you could shout mine if you're, you know, you, you think you're in range of the ball and you don't want anyone else going for it. If you're against something, you're anti that thing. And one third of a Negroni is gin. So a Negroni is, I really like a Negroni. Um, it's a cocktail that's one part uh, gin, one part um, Campari or another um, uh, bitter liqueur um, like that. Um, sorry, I couldn't think of the words I was trying to say. Light gas is uh, neon. And not totally against is open to something. And then text that begins with Al-Fatiha must be the Quran. Al-Fatiha. I don't know what that translates to, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, a deficiency of something is a lack of that thing, a sort of dearth of it. Um, component of some sci-fi ammunition, right? We sometimes hear about kind of plasma guns in a science fiction context, so I assume that's what that is. And if one isn't able to stand something, one loathes it, right? I was thinking initially maybe it means isn't able to stand as in collapses, but no, I think it means doesn't abide something, can't stand it in that sense. Movie theater eponym, Lowe's movie, that's a, a chain of movie theaters called Lowe's, and the 
eponym, in other words, the sort of namesake of the chain is low. Nasht is eight. I think that's Yiddish, nasht. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Uh, hmm, that makes sense. I, I gotcha or something. Oh, hmm. hmm that makes sense. Hmm. I don't quite see what how this begins, but it feels like gotcha is the rest of it. Classic muscle car could be a GTO. That's a classic kind of initialism for a uh, a muscle car. Um, some fall debuts. Um, I'm not sure offhand. Some fall debuts. I'm not sure if it means things that begin in autumn or if it means, I don't know, someone who sort of falls professionally. You know, if someone's a professional tumbler and this is their debut, that would probably be a bit, that would probably have a question mark at the end to indicate punniness, but I don't know. Arias typically are songs. I would have thought arias by definition were songs, but maybe that's not the, maybe we're not, maybe songs is not the right answer. So an aria being a featured song in a in an opera, but let's check the. Uh, oh no no no! It's not. Sorry sorry no! It's not songs right. Which would have which would have been a sort of odd clue because an aria is by definition a song, but an aria typically is a solo. So arias typically are solos. You could also pluralize that solely, but solos more commonly um, for a solo singer. All right, ward of the fugitive, cello ward as an actor. And shock or awe is a sense or a, not sure. Jane Austen novel that inspired Clueless. Well, it's Emma. Just too many letters. Oh, aha, I see what's going on. It's a good thing I solved this first, oversharing, because the first thing that came to mind when I read Revealing an Inappropriate Amount of Personal Detail, de depicted three times in this puzzle, the first thing that came to mind was TMI, or too much information. And I think that's what's going to go in here. And it's also good. It's good that I mentioned the alternative plural of solos as soli, um, I guess the sort of more traditional pluralization, because I think, in fact, what we're doing is doubling the I in solely, doubling the M in M, uh, right, that means we need three M's, strangely enough, because one of them is sort of really only counting as a single M. And then this will also be a three-letter word. So uh, I'll have a T. So the T is doubled. So to shock or awe is to stun somebody. There we go. So we're over sharing. So how is, why is it doubled like that? Revealing an inappropriate amount of personal detail as depicted three times in this puzzle. Oversharing. Oh, I'm sure this is a very simple sort of pun if I just thought about it the right way. Why is it doubled? Maybe it's we're sort of stretching the TMI. We're kind of taking it over. We're sort of stretching it over these blocks. So if you could imagine a sort of wide T and a wide M and a wide I, whatever that would look like, um, maybe that's sort of what it means. Well, let's not hold up the whole solve. Let's keep going. Tube traveler, an ovum through the fallopian tube, the reproductive process. Uh, lawless role of the 1990s, Xena warrior princess. That was Lucy Lawless, who I, his name I do remember. A uh, place for Christmas lights could be the eve, so the house maybe, eve. And let's see if these are meant to be read as normal. I assume they are. They may relax in tiny hammocks. Pet mice? Is that a thing? I guess it probably must be. I think that must be the answer based on the fill. Pet mice. I can imagine a pet mouse in a tiny hammock. That's adorable. A certain coming of age event. Um... Not sure, although this is an intriguing looking word. Twitter for some. Is a something box? Certain coming of age. Of, oh, bat mitzvah. There we go. 
There we go. All right. So that's a Jewish coming of age event. And then, oh, Twitter for one could be a soapbox, a sort of, you know, soapbox in the sense of the kind of town square in which you stand up on a soapbox and and hold hold court, hold forth. Um, all right. Bygone West Coast Conference name. Oh, the Pac-10. And I think it's more than that now. So it's, um, this is sort of university sports in the US. And I think it's more than 10 now. Um, cause this was the, this was the conference that my school, the, uh, university of California at Berkeley was, um, uh, a member, uh, blank Koenig frontman of rocks, vampire weekend. I have heard of vampire weekend. I don't know any of their members, but I would be surprised if this weren't Ezra. I mean, that just can't think of very many other names that start in this manner. So that's probably the answer. And yes, fem- feminist author, Zhang, Erica, Erica Zhang. Uh, that I do recognize, but fear of flying, right? And then red carpet walker for short. A VIP, a very important person. And scruffs are the napes of one's neck. Cracker Jack is an ace and is down with a, 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 a sickness, an illness, um, has it. And scruffs, na- right, napes, already looked at that. Okay, what a pocket protector might protect against, an ink blot or an ink spot, I suppose. There we go, to fit with plasma. I probably would have put that in incorrectly had I not had that cross. Bread served with aloo gobi, so that's uh, an Indian dish would be served, could be served with roti, uh, which is an Indian flatbread. And then an easy win is, Ah, right. I was going to say, I thought my first thought was route. And then I, oh no, it's not going to be that though, because this will be TM. These will be T M I or the, will they be in reverse order? Because we're sort of going clockwise around the grid. Probably not. It'll probably be top to bottom and left to right in each case. So this would be an easy win, a romp. There we go. It's not what I had in mind originally. So I'm glad I, I was thinking route, but that's not correct. To fail to mention something is to omit that fact or detail. A diaper bag supply could be talc, maybe powder for, for changing a baby's diaper. And then sultanate year near Yemen, the sultanate of Oman. There we go. This looks like it ends with milk. It may be bottled for a caretaker. Um, I don't know. Is this the, is this the milk for the baby whose diaper is changed with talc perhaps? They might pick up embarrassing side remarks, hot mics. So a microphone, that you maybe didn't realize was active and you perhaps overshared something into it. Mesmerized. If you're mesmerized, you're wrapped. You're completely entranced. And a verbal flourish feet, following a feat could be, mm, I don't know, a sort of bon mot, a kind of finishing touch, but I, I can't see what it is. Oh, and I, and I don't know what, is it oh, gotcha? I, O-H? I don't know. Actress Catherine of Glass Onion. Oh, Catherine Hahn? I think. Is that her name? Some Fall Debuts. Why can I not see what this is? So maybe this is Ah, Gotcha. Hmm, that makes sense. That sort of represents more of a dawning realization as opposed to a sudden... um, and, and the way this is phrased, hmm, that makes sense, is a bit more musing, a bit more dawning in a, of a realization. So, uh, and oh, ta-da, a verbal flourish following a feat, ta-da. It's the flourish itself. I was thinking this was going to mean a, a word that means a verbal flourish following a feat, but it isn't. It's an example of a verbal flourish following a feat to say, ta-da, I did it. All right, like fridges at times, they could be rated, a, fr- a fridge could be rated, I started thinking about words for empty, but couldn't think of anything. So I moved on to sort of what could be done to a refrigerator. 401k alternatives. This is a uh, 401k is an employee sponsored retirement plan in the United States. And you could also have an individual retirement account, not sponsored by a, a corporation that is an IRA. Economic organizations since 1945, the International Monetary Fund, maybe? That's my guess. If I had to guess, um, let's check the crosses. WTF podcast host Marin, right? So, comedian and interviewer Mark Marin is somebody. Uh, expensive cut of steak, filet mignon. So, there's our no 
no, 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 it doesn't work that way. It's this way, right? There we go, filet mignon, and that's our TMI right out of the gate. So we can put that in. I guess actually, I really, so I said I solved this more quickly because of the oversharing, but of course, that didn't take into account that if I'd solved it the other way, I would have actually filled this in normally. So it actually might've even been easier to solve, but who knows? In any case, this is a single T and some oh, TV shows, right? Okay, so it, it does mean something that begins in the season of autumn, so television program. I don't know if that's even so much true anymore, but it was traditionally true that at least sort of US sitcoms would debut in the fall. Uh, oh, Han, H-A, okay, I was, I was wondering, there are a few ways to spell Han, and I was wondering which it was, and it's this one. Challenge accepted. Come on, C-O-M-E-O-N, maybe? Uh, let's try it. Walled city of Spain, that's Avila, I believe. Check the crosses just to make sure my memory is not failing me. A motor mouth is a... Not sure. Oh, although Aer Lingus is um, a major um, Irish airline, so that's that. Use a joystick and a knee board, say. I don't think I know what that is. Sorry. Hmm. An omen is... Why can I not think this? I'm sure this is going to be immensely... <laughs> just ridiculously clear when I see it, but cake or bread? Oh, bread is capitalized. Those are those must be band names. Cake is a band. Bread, I think, must be a band. That's sort of vaguely familiar. Subject for, and, and sorry, the reason I was thinking that way is because bread being capitalized makes it a proper noun. So this wouldn't simply mean um, bread, the baked good, nor would it mean bread as a kind of slang term for money, because neither of those would have a capital B. Subject for Niels Bohr, the atom. Um, Niels Bohr, a famous physicist who dealt with sort of theories around the atom. And splicing target, a G could splice genes is a genetic concept. A motor mouth is, oh, is it a gas bag? Maybe is come on wrong? Uh, yeah, it must be wrong. Okay, fair enough. So to use a joystick and a kneeboard is to aviate. These are aviation controls. Okay. And an omen is a sign. There we go. I don't know why that took me so long. So game on is challenge accepted. And a motor mouth is indeed a gas bag. There we go. First name in dare, daredevilry is Evil Knievel, whose name is spelled as though it, well, it's sort of it's pronounced as though it were the word evil, meaning sort of bad or sinister, but uh, is spelled E-V-E-L. Final word from a director. A director might say, and scene to... Uh, end this to end the, the take. Remark from someone trying to be inconspicuous. Don't mind me, you could say. And the good dinosaur in the good dinosaur. I know this is a it's a Pixar film, I believe. I never actually saw it, but it must be named Arlo, which is a name, so that is plausible. Ho hum. If something's ho hum, it's the reason I think this is describing something as ho-hum rather than being the word ho-hum is that it's not in quotation marks. So I don't think we're looking for another exclamation that means ho-hum. In any case, it doesn't help me because I can't think of the answer. Post-workout lament. I'm sore, you might say. And Feline's sweetheart, sweetheart in a Disney classic. I don't know who this is. Sorry. The Underworld to Hades. Um, what does Hades call the underworld? I don't know. That's escaping me. It may be bottled. For, oh, breast milk could be bottled for a caretaker. Right. Okay. So it was indeed for the sort of talc dusted baby. All right. Texters, hold that thought. BRB, be, be right back. Hold that thought. And oh, Bambi. Okay. I don't, I don't recognize this reference, but Bambi must be the answer. I've not seen since I was a child, I think. Astronaut Jemison, May Jemison is an astronaut. Oh, the underworld to Hades, Hades' realm? I see. Okay, I was looking for something more specific, but this must be the answer. And then ho-hum, I oh, know. Blam doesn't... Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. What am I doing? Oh, I spelled 
hot mics in Krakow, but mott mics. I don't know what I was thinking there. In any case, if you're if something's ho hum, it could be described as being blah. So there we go. That was the Wednesday crossword, which oh look at this. <laughs> so we've replaced our TMI. It is the sort of stretched one. So we're over sharing. So the it's being sort of stretched over the, the two answers, I guess. Please let me know if there's a cleaner, a sort of more linguistically or punnily clever way to read this revealer or, or to apply it to the grid. I think it's that we're basically, ta it's sort of being stretched over the two vertical answers. But, but let me know if there's a better way to interpret that. Um, in any case, we have our oversharing, our TMI stretched over sets of answers. Filet mignon, don't mind me. Uh, breast milk, hot mics, uh, pet mice, and bat mitzvah. So, I, yeah, I mean, the constructor, Brandon Copy had to find six words or phrases. I guess in in each case, yeah, in each case, these are either phrases or a compound words. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe breast milk is considered a single word, but it's obviously effective. It's a compound word. So um, find six phrases with these three letters in uh, sequence. And I guess in each case, it's one word ending with T and another ending or beginning with M because it's just impossible to imagine anything in English that did that wasn't working in that manner with these three letters. Um, so yes, well done to him finding those all that worked of, of appropriate lengths as well to be symmetrically disposed in the grid and then to fit them nice and cleanly in the grid. It doesn't seem like there was there were too many terrible crossword words jammed in here. This all looks very clean. So yes, a nice straightforward theme for the most part, if I'm understanding, if I'm understanding the, the revealer correctly, but, it, but basically a fairly straightforward theme, but you have to sort of enter it in the grid in a way that wasn't necessarily obvious. I'd be curious to know the order in which people s solve this because I thought I had maybe gotten a leg up on it with oversharing, but I suspect it might have actually been just as smooth if I'd solved it normally, given the way that the grid is arranged. In any case, that's that for the Wednesday crossword. Enjoyed that. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle, which I did set aside. So uh, let's see. Uh, Nix Hicks points out that the phrase ivory tower refers in a general sense to a state of privileged seclusion or separation from the facts and practicalities of the real world. Academia is but one version. And that's a fair point. I refer to the ivory tower as, ivory tower as being sort of metaphorical reference to academia, but it's true. It doesn't need to be academia in particular. That's just one common application. Noah Brewster observes that the mama blank clue, which was mama mia, could also refer to the 1999 musical Mamma Mia, which was turned into a film in 2008. It could be a subtle way to add another film into the clues with the actors and movies. Super neat. I think that's entirely plausible. You're probably right. Um, because it was in quotation marks, it, I interpreted it as someone saying Mamma Mia, but those same quotation marks could also mean this is referring to a to a work such as Mamma Mia. So there we go. Nice, ob good observation. And uh, oh, I guess that's all I had from... Oh, no, Stephen Giblin points out Mystic Pizza is set in the town of Mystic, Connecticut. So there we go. That's what that mystic means. And Stephen Giblin explains also that uh, nullo contendere is basically a plea of no contest in which the accused does not enter a guilty plea, but essentially does not contest the charge. It has nothing to do with the mental state of the accused. Thank you for that correction. I was I suspected I was getting that explanation wrong, so I assumed someone would correct me, and they did. All right, that's that for today's video. I'll be back for tomorrow's puzzle, the Thursday crossword, uh, in which we might get an even more um, intricate theme than we did today's, which involved some sort of grid manipulation. Uh, we'll see. That's often what happens on Thursday. So come back for that. We'll see how it goes. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.